Hello and welcome to the start of another DJE project. With Project Rap 4x4 now completed and tucked comfortably next to the garage, it's time to turn my focus on something else. So I've chosen this, my personal 1997 BMW M3. Overall, this is a very clean and original vehicle. It has just 120,000 miles on the odometer, which isn't a lot for a 1997. And I bought this from the original owner two years ago, and they took really good care of it. There was some cosmetic stuff I wanted to do since I bought the thing two years ago and just never Never got around to doing so I figured this is the perfect time to start but before I tackle the cosmetic upgrades I have planned for this car I want to make sure it's mechanically sound now this 3.2 liter straight six is usually silky smooth but right now it's got a rough idle when cold it's also throwing a check engine light now I've already searched the internet and found out that the most likely culprits are a vacuum line or the mass airflow sensor I've already replaced both of those and unfortunately the rough idle is still here so the next thing down the list is a new oxygen sensor so today we're going to install that and just hope it works. All right, with the car turned around and the hood open, we can see the oxygen sensor connectors on the top of the engine. You have to remove kind of this top cover panel here, but it's just a couple of 10 millimeter bolts and it's really easy to do. Now, my car is throwing uh, an error code for bank one, which is cylinders one, two, and three. Now, even though that's the front of the engine, the oxygen sensor is actually at the back. There's two of them. This is the bank two and this is bank one. So this is the one we're gonna be removing. There's the connection up here and then underneath the car on the exhaust system is actually where the O2 sensor plugs in. So I'm going to take it off here and then I'm going to get the car jacked up and on jack stands and then head under it to unscrew that part. Now, usually when I'm working on a car, I like to refer to a Haynes manual or something similar just so I know what I'm doing. But I actually don't do that much work on this car myself. And it's actually been pretty reliable in the two years I've had it. So I haven't had to do much work. So I've never done an oxygen sensor on one of these and I don't really know how this is going to work. But I think the best thing to do is just kind of attack it smartly. So I have the new sensor here and I can kind of study and figure out, it looks like there's just two tabs on the top and bottom that hold it on, and then it should come off. Unfortunately, these tabs that hold it in are actually on the connector that's attached to the car, so I gotta be really careful not to damage them. But the new plug is not gonna wanna go in. So just make sure to be really careful, especially in an old car like this. I think it's 22 years old and everything's just so brittle. All right, so that is off just as I thought it would, and it looks very similar. So we have the right part here. So now we have to um, get the car up in the air and tack it from the other side. Okay, so I've got the car up on jack stance. It's nice and secure. And I've already gone ahead and went under to look around for our oxygen sensor and I've located, like I said, it was on bank one, which is the front half of the engine. There's kind of two exhaust manifolds in these E36 BMWs. There's one for the first three cylinders and one for the second. So it's pretty easy to locate. But just to make sure, I went ahead and fed the connector end of the oxygen sensor down just to make sure that I was on bank one. And of course I am, so now we're good to go. So I have to crawl under there. It's a little difficult to see and it's kind of on the other side of the exhaust to get the um, oxygen sensor plug out of there. But I had this handy dandy kind of upside down. So hopefully I'll be able to drop it on it from the top and unscrew it from the bottom. But let's see if we can do it. All right, so I'm gonna go a little Blair Witch on you to try to show you what this is. And no, it's not a camera trick. I was just on vacation and didn't shave, so I'm a little bit shaggy here. Uh, but let's go ahead and crawl under the car. I'm gonna to try to show you what is going on. So let me flip the camera around. Here are the two exhausts. You can see this is the rear exhaust manifold. There's goes to the three of the cylinders. And then this is the other one. It goes to the front of the engine and the exhaust sensor. O2 sensor is right here on it. It's kind of up tucked on the other side of it, it's really hard to see and even harder to get to. So hopefully this thing isn't rusted in there too badly and I'll be able to get it off. Let's give it a try. 
and success the old o2 sensor is out now it was at a really awkward angle and it was difficult to even get to but thankfully it wasn't in there too tight it wasn't rusted on at all so it actually came out pretty easily now the installation is obviously just the reverse of this i'm going to plug in the uh, o2 sensor back into the exhaust underneath and then i'm going to figure out how this routes back up to the engine plug it all in get the car started and hopefully that's our problem fingers crossed <laughs> Ow. All right, I've got the, all the wires now kind of routed correctly, I hope, underneath the car. Now I just come up here and plug in the new sensor, and then we can start it up and see if we still have that lumpy idle. All right, let's see what we got. And for the third time, this rough idle has defeated me. It wasn't the oxygen sensor, it wasn't the mass airflow sensor, it wasn't that PCV valve vacuum tube. I just have no idea what's wrong with this thing. And at this point, I'm kind of sick of throwing money after just things I think it might be. I think it's time to wave the white flag and get this to my BMW specialist so I can finally get on with the rest of this project. So on that very disappointing note, thanks for watching.